It is the historic racing capital of the world, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And today it plays host to round number 25 of the 2021-22 National Sim Racing League Cup Series, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Welcome to the Brickyard 250. 26 drivers strong, ready to take the green flag as qualifying currently just wrapping up. We come on and say hello, friends. Marty Sakala with you. Glad you could join us for the National Sim Racing League. Well, we no, go. We have one. We have one. Well, we go from one historic road course to one historic oval, perhaps the most historic ro uh, racetrack in the world, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, home to the Indy 500, to many other incredible races from the Brickyard Grand Prix, and now it's home to the NSRO Cup Series. As you can see, we are using the oval track layout of Indianapolis Motor Speedway, not using the road course base setup. So this will provide an interesting challenge for these drivers. I, try, I tried out a couple of different setups. A lot of drivers are going to be experiencing that rear end coming out from underneath them. Whether or not, if they use enough brake or even too much brake, the rear end will be sideways. So expect a lot of drivers to probably try and catch some slides today. And expect drivers to possibly back it into the wall in those short shoots. You see Kayla McCarthy taking to the track in the number 24, currently 7th seventh quick. And if you missed us last week at the famed Watkins Glen International, we had a great race between Landon Lacey and Dylan Clark. It was Lacey that got the win for his third win of the season, but more importantly, it also led to a KTS 1-2-3-4 finish. So an incredible race by all of those drivers around. As we get set to go here, let's give you how the points payout currently looks as we have two races left to go before the playoffs begin after today. So coming on in, it is, you already know who the winners are. Dylan Clark, by the way, made his way in last week after starting at Watkins Glen International as we get set to go racing here. 26 drivers ready to take the green flag, ladies and gentlemen. Here is the starting lineup at the Brickyard. On the front row, it is Ashton Crowder in the 98. You know how he has done this season. He's six for six. Can he, excuse me, can he go seven for seven? Well, he's got a challenger with Landon Lacey next to him. That's the front row. Row number two, it's Dylan Clark in the 34 and Josh Soucy in the 12. Row three, Kayla McCarthy in the 24 and Aiden Bearline in the 13. Row four, Tyler Isley in the 17 and Mark Sikosi in the 91. Row number five, Jimmy Barr in the 81 and David Smeal Jr. in the 29. And in row six is Kyle Milliken in the 42 and Tyler Rush in the 27. The seventh row gives us Steve Tripmatter in his debut in the 51 and Briggs Swope in the number seven. Row eight, Justin Dills in the 19 and Robbie Bites in the 28. Row number nine, Don DeGroote in the 20 and Brian Wiggins in car number one. And in row 10, it's David Salter in the 88 and Brian Preslar in the 67. Row number 11, Russ Boisvert makes his return in car number three. George Wood is in the 26. And in row 12, Stan Mayberry in the 99 and Josh Aaron in the 77. The final row gives us Alan Crowell in the nine and Alex Robinson in the 23. So the field is getting set to take the green flag. Stand by, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, when the pace car rolls off. So a good battle developing, by the way, in the point standings now that Dylan Clark has made his way, and that is the battle for 16th. Daniel Menzies is up by 14 on Kyle Milliken without the drivers that are already eligible and in the playoffs that have already quit. We'll get rid of those after 26 races. That's the battle for 16th. Menzies is up by 14. If Brian Wiggins in the, in the one has a rough day today, watch out for him to be a part of that battle for the final two spots. 
in the playoff. Justin Cope also starting to fade back as he hasn't raced with us in a while. So again, keep that in mind. Here's your race analysis for today. 100 laps, 250 miles. Stages will end at laps 25, 50, and 100. Nine degrees in the turns and six tire sets for the drivers today. You're looking at your weather forecast set for January 26. 76 degrees is the track temp. The air temp at a calm 71 degrees. It's cloudy here, which means the speeds should go a little bit quicker. One of the biggest fields that we have seen in a while as they go past the Indianapolis golf course. 26 drivers are ready to take the green flag. A lot of the storylines to watch out for very closely today. First off, Ashton Crowder, your pole sitter, looking to go seven for seven with the series. And then there is another driver in the field. That by the means of Landon Lacey, looking to go four in a row. With four, with three wins on the season, his first three wins, looking to go four in a row. You got Dylan Clark looking to get two wins on the season, and Josh Susi wants to get his sixth win on the season. They come off a of turn four. Race fans, it's time to strap in and hold on tight because these men and women are about to turn them loose and drop the sledgehammer. The iRacing pace truck car makes its way to pit road. Crowder and Lacey, the front row at the historic Indianapolis Motor Speedway. It's showtime at the Brickyard. One of the toughest corners in motorsports. Lap one, turn one, and Ashton Crowder gets away with the jump. Landon Lacey second, and it's Josh Susie third, Dylan Clark fourth, Aiden Barreline round out the top five. Expect a lot of single file racing today going down the straights. One driver starting to fade back a little bit. That's Dylan Clark has a challenge from Aiden Bearline up at the number 13 making his return. As he gets stuck up on the middle, Kayla McCarthy may take advantage of that and try and pick up a spot, which she does. McCarthy takes away fifth. Again, open setup. So pretty much you'll see the driver with the best setup and the best car win the race today. Ashton Crowder leads lap number one at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Best battle on track. Goes back to Aiden Bearline, but a change for position. Mark Sakosi talked with him earlier today. He said didn't have the best setup. In front of them though, Kayla McCarthy gets passed around the outside by Aiden Bearline. I think McCarthy kicked some dust up off of turn number one. The mayo led to the car fading back just a little bit. Mark Sikosi in the number 91 inside on Tyler Isley. P7 is on the line in the corner. And Sikosi takes that spot away. Excuse me, Clark, I believe. No, excuse me, that was Isley taking the spot away from Sikosi. Right on board here with Tyler Isley for a lap. Chowing down on her firm, on her former teammate, that being Kayla McCarthy. Tried to look to the inside, but backed out of it. Nobody down shifting here at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Very interesting that in the corners, no one's going down from fifth to fourth gear. Pocono, Speed, Pocono Raceway has turned number two a lot similar to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. However, though, really the big difference is that there is a longer corner IMS compared to Pocono. You see Isley trying to get the draft off of Kayla McCarthy. Very tough with the high downforce. Very tough to pass once we get a long run in and very tough to get the draft. Alex Robinson is in pit road early here. We got one driver that has spun it off the pace and that's Kyle Milliken in the number 42 and he has pounded the right front. We'll have to take a look at our replay to see what took place with Kyle Milliken, a driver that's normally been known for not finishing these races in the past. And you can see as we came into the shot, he had already hit the wall. Was this a rear end situation? 
Ah, put the wall, put it head on, and somehow, no caution by race control. So Milliken calls it a night there. Meanwhile, we go back up to the front. It is Ashton Crowder that's currently at the point. Landon Lacey is one and a half seconds behind. Closest battle on the track is right here, right now. And that is the battle for 16th position. Stan Mayberry and Justin Deltz. Mayberry making his third, I believe his third or fourth start with the tour. Trying to look inside. Oh my goodness! Justin Delt careening out of control. It's like the car snapped to the right. Head on shot into the safer barrier and we are under caution for the first time today at the Brickyard. Oh my goodness. Single car spin. That was a nasty shot. You got to be very careful with these rear ends. If you try to catch the slide a little bit too much, that car is taking a nasty shot. You just saw it right there. Let's watch what happened with Justin Diltz, the number 19. Did the rear end come out? Yes, it did, and just tried to counter it back and had too much counter, where it just went head on into the safer barrier like Sebastian Bourdais did a couple years ago at qualifying for the, board, for the Indy 500. Let's go from another angle. Bam. Thank goodness for safer barriers, for virtual safer barriers. Hang on, folks. This is going to be a ride. Too much right, right, right hands in that situation. So a single car incident brings out the first caution of the evening here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. As we see the number 19 make his way into pit road. A very wicked shot for the 19. Alex Robinson did a start in park from what we are hearing in chat. He had to go call super late model speed week. Probably a virtual world series of asphalt I would assume. Chris Lynn says, good luck to Ethan today. I wish I could be there to help, but we're called late. Fortunate to hear that. D-Fast Racer rooting for Aiden Barreline. Aiden, by the way, an E-NASCAR Word of Outlaw Series driver. I believe entering Weed Sport on Monday, he was the first driver out. I think of the drivers that were in trouble of not making it next season. I don't follow the pro stuff a lot on iRacing compared to what I do here. It is Dirt Supers at Lanier. Okay, I got you. One driver is in the pits, and that is George Wood. Wood making his debut with the National Sim Racing League. We'll go at it for four tires and field. Excuse me, that was a field only stop. Daniel Menzies in the, in the chat watching, wishing everyone luck, and he wishes he could be there too. Remember, there are long pace laps around the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. So these will be a, be a while. We look at what's coming up on the calendar for the rest of this regular season. After this, next week to kick off February will be the Michigan 250 at MIS. And then February 9th, we go all the way down to Japan across the Pacific and say konnichiwa to them for the regular season finale, saying sayonara before the playoffs with the Thunder Special 200 at Twin Ring Motegi. We take a look inside the Martin Sports number 53 car. That is Landon Lacey. should be one lap to green before we get ready for this restart. The last time NASCAR raced on the oval, of course you may remember, that was the 2020 Brickyard 400. That was, I think they called it the Big Machine Hand Sanitizer 400, and it was 
Kevin Harvick took the win. He won the last two Brickyard 400s, if I recall correctly, if not the last three. Nope, it was the last two. Brad Kislowski won it in 2018 before it switched over to the road course last season. A historic road course race and a crazy one. Seen A.J. Allmendinger get the win and the first win for Colic Racing in the Cup Series before they even go full-time. And that was a bold prediction of mine in 2021 was that A.J. Allmendinger would win a Cup race. I thought specifically it'd be at the Daytona Road Course. As we listen on board with Dylan Clark, thought we heard something come out. I was rooting for Chase Briscoe, though, to get that win. Then he got that unfortunate penalty. All right. We're ready to go back to green for our first restart. Let's reset the field for you if you can see it. Ashton Crowder, the leader, selects the inside line with Landon Lacey next to him. Row number two, Josh Soucy and Dylan Clark. Row three, Kayla McCarthy and Aiden Bearline. Row four, it's Mark Sikosi and Tyler Isley. And rounding out the top ten, that's Jimmy Barr and David Smeal Jr. Justin Diltz is still on the track in car number 19, but he restarts in the 24th position with front end damage to that elevated outdoor speed demon setup machine. Crowder is the control car for this restart. And there should be a marked area. That's the speed demon restart zone. And it's right there as they get to the pit lane wall that inside it wall which we are back to green nice restart for Crowder as he holds serve meanwhile Josh Susie looks inside on Landon Lacey the second place battle is on Susie got a little bit tight in the center of turn number one and he backs out of it holds on to third spot Dylan Clark riding in fourth position trying to go around the outside Susie is way loose look out we got one off the pace that is Tyler Rush. Can he save it? We've got one in trouble as well. Many drivers checking up. And somehow the yellow flag does not fly. And that is David Salter in the 88. He gets it back going. And somehow, some way, no caution, we stay under the green flag. Josh Susi has fallen all the way back to the seventh position. Remember we talked about earlier in pre-race that those rear runs in the corners would get very loose, would get out of control with the next gens and could pose a big factor. We've seen it early with Josh Susi. We saw it on a couple of drivers out of turn two. Dylan Clark in third, Aiden Bearline fourth, McCarthy fifth, Tyler Isley trying to close in, has his hands full though with Susie behind him. You see Dylan Clark, the third place car, trying to break the draft off of Aiden Bearline a little bit early here at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. That works out well early. Clark won at Road America, finished second last week at Watkins Glen, had an opportunity to win last week at the Glen with about a lap or two of fresher tires, but then it flat spotted them in turn number six. Though trying to get by lap traffic, put him in the runoff spot nearly in the gravel and pretty much ended his chances of a win. Again, we talked about it was one, two, three, four, K KTS Racing, and they were the only four drivers to finish on the lead lap. Of course, when you look at a track like Watkins Glen International, that is caution free. Josh Susie was a driver that was involved in a couple of spins and somehow finished in the fourth position. A little bit of controversy between him and Ryan Broderick. Broderick not in the field this weekend, not entered for this weekend. Got spun in a dangerous spot in the corner in the S's. As Susie takes away position number six, and again, that rear end just getting a little bit loose in the entry of turn number four. Keep in mind these cars do not have traction control in them like IMSA cars do, like sports cars did, as of course the big race, big special event happened, the Daytona 24. So it's you gotta make sure you really maintain control of your machines, or else you're in for a treat. And turn number one, I believe that is, if not turn two, that is a good battle with Brian Wiggins and Stan Mayberry. 
That's for 14th on the track. See, Wiggins had some left side damage that may have been from that restart. Not too sure what happened to him earlier. They continue to go side by side in turn three. Mayberry's got the preferred line and he takes away P14. Nice start for Stan Mayberry. Currently the biggest mover of this race so far. Started from 23rd and has made his way up into 14th position. Wiggins starting to lose some time. Brian Preslar all over and same with Russ Boysford in the number three. That's the 15th place battle. Right on board that DraftKings 67 of Preslar, one of the known, one of the more known cleaner racers with the series. Let's go to another class battle ahead of them. That is Robbie Bice and Stan Mayberry has caught him for position number 13. Brian Preslar now, let's go back there. He takes a peek inside on Wiggins and I think Wiggins will let him have the position and he does. So Brian Preslar takes away the 15th position. Let's go to a battle here. This is for ninth spot on your screen. To me, that's actually for 10th on your screen. David Smeal and Steve Stritt matter. This is important because remember, the first stage ends at lap 25 and top 10 will earn bonus stage points. First from 10th, go from 10th to, to first in terms of the bonus points. So you wanna be in that 10th position when the time comes and Steve Stritt matter trying to take advantage in the forward. Takes the inside and Strip Matter is up into the 10th position. Highest spot he's been in today. Let's go back behind as Mayberry trying to pass on Brig Swope for 13th spot. Mayberry's got the position handled and now he tries to crack down on Robbie Bice for P12. Brian Wiggins has been passed by Russ Boysford. That's for 16th place on the track. Boysford making his return to National Sim Racing League competition. Who doesn't love that six scheme? The black, yellow, blue number three just makes you think of it's something that's coming out of Tron. 14 laps are in the books. It is your race leader, Ashton Crowder, Landon Lacey, Dylan Clark, Aiden Bearline, and Kayla McCarthy. The top five we go side by side for the first time tonight. If trouble breaks out, we'll break in.
Welcome back to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Speed Demons live coverage of the National Sim Racing League Brickyard 250. Ashton Crowder continues to lead. Landon Lacey, Dylan Clark, Kayla McCarthy, and Aiden Bearline. No change amongst the top five since the last time we saw you. Don't forget stage one ends at lap number 25. The pits close with two laps to go in this stage. You're seeing some of the good battles you see on your screen. How about this one? This is the battle for 12th between Stan Mayberry and Briggs Swope. Mayberry trying to close in on David Smeal Jr. He's been leapfrogging many drivers. Let's compare the last five laps. You see how, mu how much slower Smeal is compared to Mayberry. So this is definitely helping out the 99 big time. Again, that's the battle for 11th, one off of the top 10. Only one yellow so far in this race, and that was for the spin just around lap six or seven that involved Justin Diltz. He's having a tough time rebounding at the moment. You see it right there. Mayberry makes the pass stick on Strip Matter. Can he reach up though to the 51? Just three seconds shy. You see Swope taking advantage up and in the slipstream of Mayberry. So move the number seven up into P12. Another close battle happening here. Josh Susie has been able to take away fifth position from Aiden Bearline. Let's take this opportunity here and replay how Susie was able to make the pass. You see he had the slipstream there into turn number three. And so Josh Susie is up into P5. So this means the top five are currently out of the KTS Motorsports camp. Ashton Crowder is a part of the KTS clan, so imagine if they could do one better with a top five finish of Crowder, Lacey, Clark, McCarthy, and Susie. KTS, by the way, come in leading the owner's stance. We don't talk about the owner's championship that often, but they have put up a clinic. 1,229 points to the elevated motorsports, 949. Again, closest battle you were watching on your screen. Caroline trying to fight back that number 13, but I don't know if he's going to be able to get there. See how he does in the slipstream. Nothing at all coming from the driver of the number 13. Let's go to another battle happening. Steve Strip Matter. Excuse me, this is Jimmy Barr that has closed in on Mark Sikosi, and I think Sikosi may have used up his tires a little bit too much, so Jimmy Barr gonna try and take advantage of it. It's Sikosi at the line, but just meters after, it goes back to Jimmy Barr. So that puts the 81 car up into eighth position. Sakosi falls back to ninth. Each trading the spots from where they started. Bar from ninth, Sakosi from eighth when they took the green flag for the first time in the race. Let's go back behind them though. Here we go. Great battle happening on track. This is for the 11th position. Boys vert all over Mayberry. And so Russ Boysford is able to take the 11th spot away. Mayberry falls back to 12th. So this is a little bit interesting. If Boysford used his tires up better than Mayberry, and probably the same with Swope and Smeal, came back to bite the number 99 potentially. Let's go back again. The bar Sikosi battle for eighth position. Still the closest on your screen for now. You see Jimmy Barr has a tribute sticker. It says GH27 Forever, I believe. It's a great way to honor 
a lost one, whether it be in your family or your friends. So Barr still holding on to eighth position. Pits are closed for the rest of the stage with two laps to go in the stage. I would not be surprised, by the way, if the caution flag flew before Ashton Crowder came across the start-finish line. And, I mean, would you look at that lead? Five and a half seconds on Landon Lacey. That's just absolutely absurd. He is running laps that, compared to the second-place driver, are eight-tenths of a second. Everyone else, he is a second quicker than. That's just unbelievable. Absurd. His best lap is six tenths of a second faster to land in Lacey. Ashton, I'm going to call you like the Dana White of Blackjack. You're the Dana White of National Sim Racing League competition. You're winning too much. Just retire and come join me in the booth. You were successful in New Hampshire, and all these other people raised it out. <laughs> I'm kidding. Ashton Crowder does what he wants. Final lap underway in stage number one. Let's, for the heck of it, just for craps and giggles, let's look at those last five laps. Hey, you know, he has given Lacey a little bit of breathing room. So there is that. Final stage point going to go to Steve Strickmatter in the 51 as long as he hold, can hold it off on Russ Boysford. So Ashton Crowder comes across the start finish line as your stage one winner and there is the yellow flag. So Ashton Crowder in the charge racing KTS Motorsports number 98 is your stage one winner. We'll go to break for the first time this evening, and we will be right back for Green Flag for Pit Stop. Stay with us. With the Butt Kicker Gamer 2, what you see and what you hear is what you feel. Butt kicker. The future is feeling. open and everyone is into the pits and so we will see how they do on your screen Ashton Crowder coming off the stage one win leads the field down for four tires and fuel and a couple of drivers overshoot their pit box I would not be surprised if this were to be a good time for Crowder to take an extended pit stop. And I think you all know what I'm talking about. Nope. 
It's going to go at it. Wins the race off pit road. Dylan Clark, Landon Lacey, Kayla McCarthy. And fifth spot waiting for him to come onto the track. It's Tyler Isley over Mark Sikosi, each with, I think, slower stops than normal. Up, David. So Ashton Crow Crowder will come begin stage two as the leader will step aside and come back in just a moment. Test one, two, three, four, five. Lap to go until we take the green flag. Couple of other things to let you know. Next week we are at the Michigan International Speedway for a fun one. Start time is at 8:45 p.m. on the broadcast on Facebook.com/slash National Sim Racing League there we go. and Twitch.tv slash Marty Sakala. Let's reset the field here for you as we come back to green for the restart. Crowder selected the outside lines. We get ready to go back to green. Dylan Clark is next to him. Row number two, Kayla McCarthy and Landon Lacey. Row three, Mark Sikosi and Tyler Isley. Row four, Steve Stripmatter and Jimmy Barr. And rounding out the top ten is Stan Mayberry and Russ Boysberg. Coming out of our second yellow flag of this race. We're back to green. A clean jump for Crowder. He can come down in front of Dylan Clark if he wants to and hold serve into the corner. Oh, Landon Lacey all over Kayla McCarthy through the third position. Nearly put the chrome horn on Kayla. Don't want to be doing that to Kayla 316. Ah, hang on a second. Lacey a little bit squirrely off of turn number two. Keeps it going. Everyone single file into turn number three. A bad entrance for Isley. He is up in the third or outermost groove of IMS. Here we go. McCarthy inside on Dylan Clark for second spot. It will be the highest McCarthy's been all day today. And Kayla is up to second. Meanwhile, Clark and Lacey do get it for third position with Isley behind them. This is a fun battle in the turn one to begin stage number two. Here goes Lacey with the win. Oh, my! Clark and Lacey get together and collect Sikosi and Strip Manor. Yellow is out. The teammates collide. I told you these rear ends were going to have major issues tonight. And it takes out two drivers. That could have been in contention to win this one. Heartbreak as well for Steve Stripmatter. 
A top 10 race going on, it likely just went up into the wall. It all started when Dylan Clark in that 34 car just simply got loose and came down. The rear end went out from underneath him. Nobody else had, look at Susie going into the runoff in a turn number two to try and miss that. I guess that's what you get when you hit someone sideways. Yep, that is what happens. Someone just spotted up on the radio. That rear Ryan just came out. There's Susie. Rest in peace, Orange Cones. Let's take you on board here with Lacey. As he was instant bystander of all of this. Got Sakosi, got Strip Matter. Let's ride on board with the next driver here. That would be Sakosi in the 91. You see he does have damage to his fake dodge. Stunned and absolutely nowhere to go. Go to Strip Matter. Oh, we can tell you he just brought his machine into the pits. Because he has absolutely nowhere to go. Right, he couldn't even come down. He knew that he knew he had nowhere to go. And let's show you the madness of Josh Susie's mess. Behind bear line in the five, the fake five. Saw this. I don't know what made him decide to go through the smoke and then kill all these orange cones. Susie, you're a murderer! You're a cone murderer! So many drivers are in the pits, likely ending their night. Let's show you one more on board, and we're going to go from Kayla. Defast, like, I'm glad you like that joke. <laughs> I love to mess around with these guys. It's it's always hilarious. So, um, thinking here. Why don't we do this? We'll stop aside real quick, and then we'll have the restart after this break. So stay with us. back 
We're right on time to go back to green here at Indianapolis. We'll have 16 laps to go in the stage. Here's how the field looks. It's Ashton Crowder and Kayla McCarthy, the front row, and Crowder selects the outside line. Tyler Isley and Jimmy Barr in row number two. Row three, Stan Mayberry and Russ Boisvert. Row four, Aiden Bearline and Josh Susi. And row five, Briggs Swope and David Smeal Jr. Crowder with the control car again once they hit. Sitenuator that separates pit road from the racing surface is when Crowder can fire. Barry can fire there. And there he goes. We're back to green. Another nice restart from Crowder into turn one. McCarthy tucks up back. Susie on the second crew, not where he wants to be. He is back to sixth position. Does not like racing on cold tires at all. And here comes the 99 of Mayberry, who is up to sixth. That is a great restart by the 99, making a great room for improvement. Boysford is up to the top five for the first time in this race. Same with Jimmy Barr after the big accident that just happened. And now Barr gets tight, opens the door for Boysford. Oh, no! Up and into Barreline he goes, and Barreline pounds the inside wall. Heavy front end damage to the machine. Aye, 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 Captain. And we are hearing that, I think that was Sakosi that was also involved. We can't confirm that just yet. Once again, we are seeing big rear ends get loosey-goosey just like that. And there is Bearline with absolutely nowhere to go. Let's rewind this, give you a better foundation of how this started. Saw Bar get tight, tried to look on the lower groove. There's the rear end just sliding, bam. And then watch this from Bearline. With nowhere to go, Mayberry misses it. Nice job by Smeal to find the, the gap up the middle. Here's the Umber with Bear line. He tried to go low. He thought he was going back down to the inside. And then pancakes the left side. What a shame once again for Aiden Bearline and also for us boys. We have a couple of drivers that come into pit. And we'll keep it right here with you. Our drivers come in. And forget chatter, we'll let you listen in. Taking top.
We are ready to go back to green here at IMS. Reset the field here for you. Again, Crowder selects the outside line. Kayla McCarthy next to him. Row number two, Tyler Isley and Jimmy Barr. Row three is Josh Susie and Stan Mayberry. Row number four, David Smeal Jr. and Briggs Swope. And row five, David Salter and Tyler Rush. Got currently 20 drivers on the lead lap. Baden Barreline is out of the race, along with Landon Lacey, Kyle Milliken, and Alex Robinson. Pace car is in. Crowder ready to fire. We're going back to green. 12 laps to go in stage two. Another great jump for Crowder. McCarthy tucks it back in line. Here we go for third. Isley holding on to that. Meanwhile, Susie wants Jimmy Barr for P4. Can Barr hold on to it? He's trying to play as much defense as possible. Trouble behind them. That is Smeal. That is off the course. Did he merge back up safely? Yes, he did. But he falls all the way back outside of the top 15. Back to that battle for fourth position. Susie takes away P4. Here comes Mayberry. Wants a crack at the top five for the first time today. Hey, sorry, Clark. Susie tries to pull away and chase down Isley. 11 laps to go in the stage as Brian Wiggins makes his way down into pit road. Mayberry trying to find a way around Jimmy Barr, nearly clipped the wall. Again, start from 23rd position. And he is all the way up to P6. And he wants more. Took a peek inside, couldn't get the slingshot to work. And Barr gets tied. Mayberry almost runs into him. And he looks in the short shoot. And Barr shuts the door. And that sets Barr sideways. Yellow flag is out. But he goes around. Thanks. Nah, Jimmy. I'm sorry, man. But you tried to block, I think. We'll have to look at, the, at our drone shot. Try and get a nice angle, and somehow, after all of that, Barr has front end damage. Pace car in the back stretch. Let's show you. This is the drone shot. Ah, Mayberry was there, and Barr came down. At the same time, though, let's let's watch once more. This will be an area. This will be a slow motion shot we have. Sorry what happened with me on the caution before, guys. I uh, force feedback just kicked off right on corner entry. You know, I would honestly call that a racing move. You know, Jimmy did come down, and then at the same time, you think of it, Stan tried to pull the dive bomb. Jimmy was trying to save it, and Mayberry let him go. Brake Swope takes the big advantage of it. He goes up into fifth position, unless they call the caution out earlier. I think race control did did signal for that yellow flag. So it's a tough break for Jimmy Barr right inside the top five. Luckily, minimal damage, though. Actually, more damage than you would expect as we have a couple of drivers that come in trying to play strategy. Early here before stage three begins. Lucky dog coming high. Lucky dog coming high. Wow, Justin Diltz back on the lead lap. So we have 11 drivers that stayed out. So we'll watch the 81 cars pit stop. And while we're at it, we'll stay right here for radio.
And it looks like it will be a while for Jimmy. So we'll check here if this is two degree or one degree. Take it off. And it should be one degree in here. And it is. So, let's reset the field as we get back to the green flag. Once again, Crowder takes the top, and McCarthy is next to him. Row number two, that is Tyler Isley and Josh Susie. Row three, Briggs Swope and Tyler Rush should get the fourth row here. In a matter of moments, that should be Dylan Clark and Alan Crowell. And then row five, Don DeGroote and Robbie Bites. Once again, stage ends at lap number 50. It will close at lap 48. Jay Bay Bay 05123 in the chat, rooting for Smeal, Jimmy, and Isley. Appreciate you joining on in. Crowder fires back to green. Seven to go in stage two. McCarthy right there, but Crowder gets it into turn one, holds on to the serve. Here comes Susie, thought about going around the outside on McCarthy for the second position. Side by side behind. That is Briggs Swope, and around the outside, Dylan Clark recovering from his spin with Landon Lacey in the beginning of stage two earlier on. Field rolls down the back straight away of IMS. Oh, hang on, McCarthy locked him up in turn three. She is loose, another driver is loose behind them. That was Rush in the 27 who saves it. And nobody spins after all of that. Here comes Crowell trying to take seventh spot. But back to that side-by-side -side battle happening for fifth position between Swope and Clark with six laps to go in stage two. Swope keeps it, keeps position on to fifth. Couple of drivers, by the way, that pitted. One, for example, Robbie Vice, who pitted on lap number 41, is up into eighth position. Vice took four tires in field and could use that to his advantage potentially. Third position battle here. Kayla McCarthy and Tyler Isley. McCarthy wobbles up a groove, opens the door for the 17th. Ice, ice, baby, takes away P3. Two-time winner this season in the 300. 
and the and the World 375. Loves those big those big notable races. What do we call them? Not triple crown races, but landmark races or milestone races or something like that. This is one that he wants to win big time. Two wins on the season, and he wants win three. Dylan Clark down low on Briggs Swope. He can't clear him yet. That's some good racing. I'll stay high here for you, David. Rick Swope still holding on. Closest battle on track. Let's see if Clark can get a run down low. He's there. He's got the power off. And he could edge. That's Kayla McCarthy. Isley telling McCarthy, if you want to go, go. Behind them still. Clark cannot pass Swope just yet. Those are the cons of this 550 horsepower package. And there goes Dylan, he takes away the fifth position. That's also allowed Tyler Rush to close in following his save. Let's go in front meanwhile and find McCarthy and Isley. Is Isley letting McCarthy go here? There's the run for Kayla, gets the apron. And move Kayla up into third position. Final driver that could earn stage points is Salter in the 88, but has a big challenger from Mayberry. The drivers from 10th on back to 12th or so, they all pitted for four tires and fuel. Update you on Jimmy Barr. He is a part of that currently in 12th position. Was able to repair the front end with optional damage. That's, a good, that's another good benefit of Indianapolis Motor Speedway with the longer pace laps. Drivers can take longer to get their damage repaired. It's not like a track like Bristol where if you have damage, it could risk your race. But here we go for ninth spot. Salter has a run on Aaron. Oh man, Josh is fighting it back. right on board with Mayberry as he watches that battle happening. Would love to get into the top 10. This is a huge battle here. Two to go in the stage. Remember, when the yellow flies, that's going to be when the positions are locked. The field is frozen. Here comes Barr trying to fight back on Mayberry. Duh, done. Duh, done. Where were these two earlier? Behind, in front of them. Tyler Rush, Alan Crowell, that's for seventh. But this is the battle we're watching closely. Salter still with a run on the DraftKings 77 of Aaron. And Aaron slams the door in a turn three. Great defense by Aaron. A nice driving with that 550 package. Salter still trying to fight back. There's Mayberry in that 99. Final lap of stage, three, stage number two is underway. Salter, is he going to try and peek his nose inside? He cannot, oh, Salter goes wide! Salter goes wide, this could open a chance for Mayberry. We'll see if it does, not yet at the moment. Jimmy Barr gets a run for 11th on Mayberry. And that should likely do it for a chance at 10th position. Meanwhile, off of turn number four, Ashton Crowder won stage one. He comes off the final corner and we'll see the green and white checkered flag to win stage two by just about six seconds on Josh Susie as the yellow flies to end the stage. It's Susie, McCarthy, Isley, Clark, Swope, Rush, Aaron, Crowell, and Salter in the top ten as we had a break when we come back we've got pit stops stay with us
time for pit stops to take place. While we're at it, before we get going here, we'd like to take this opportunity to give a shout out to our sponsors. Of course, Speed Demon Setups TV and Graphics, Elevate Outdoors, Butt Kicker, Affordable SEO and Marketing. I think I got all of them. Thank you for your support as always. So we'll watch Crowder's pit stop and see if this is an extended stop. One driver we can mention did stay out, David Salter, trying to lead a lap. And Crowder on his ex on his little bathroom break. Susie McCarthy, Clark Swope, and in fifth goes to Tyler Rush. So Crowder will take his time and try and make a charge from the rear to the front. We'll see how that works out. So Josh Shusi should restart as the leader. We'll keep it right here for you and uh, listen to the incredible sounds Dylan, of the cars and listen to radio chatter. No, I'm not. That cone deserved it. I'm sticking out too far. Looks like you and I have the same idea, Ashton. Yeah, I had to take my insulin, so I was left out to dry there. Never mind. Oh. Same idea. Well, that's funny because the pitch said they were open, but yet, uh, and it gave me a black flag. Not like it would have made a, like a difference anyway. Yeah, the tracks with the short. Uh, caution cycle like this where it's only three laps you don't go in the first time on the lead lap it closes the pits for you it, it said it was open when I was getting ready to when I was going in it said it was open and then it turns around and says it's closed now I got black flag Yeah, the only real way to get around that on these big tracks is just roll through the pits first time by. But that's not guaranteed you to lead a lap, unfortunately. Nineteen the yoga one. Back to green. Stage three is underway. Susie holding serve. The first leader not named Ashton Crowder in this race. Off a of turn two, Dylan Clark second, Caleb McCarthy third. Here comes 
McCarthy trying to get a run inside. But can't do it. Update on Crowder. He is up into 15th position. Here she goes. Looking down low for second. Can Kayla make the pass work? And the answer is yes. Meanwhile, Susie is up to his lead. To just about eight tenths of a second. Break Swope all over Dylan Clark for third. Couple of drivers to give shout outs to. Josh Aaron, Stan Mayberry, Alan Crowell all up in the top 10 after accidents just like Dylan Clark, but they've been going bigger on the gaps. Mayberry inside on Aaron, that's for sixth. And a nice pass from Stan. Oh, maybe not yet. I think he got loose on exit. Allows Aaron to keep fighting in this battle. Oh, we're gonna go three wide here. Isley thought about it. He definitely has a second opinion. May try and go around the outside on Mayberry. Look at this, that may actually work. Nope, it said Aaron goes wide in the short shoot. Mayberry, then Isley get around. And this is getting a lot of fun, especially with that pink and white and pink car coming. That's Ashton Crowder. Right on board for a lap as he tries to get through all this traffic. Look at the speed, 196 into one. Working on Alan Crowell and Robbie Bice. Oh, risky move there, hole closed up though. I would love to see the top speed. If he can hit 200, I'll be amounted. Only hit 195, puts the bumper to Robbie, say, hey buddy, time to move. Because you've got a, a whooping fast car behind you. Meanwhile, we've got the battle for the lead that's developed. Sorry about that, Robbie. My fault. I think Crowder was apologizing for pointing the bumper. Meanwhile, Kayla McCarthy. I just ran. No McCarthy just ran down her best lap of the day at a 52.82, which has allowed her to close in on Josh Susie for the race lead. But don't forget, 550 horsepower, high downforce, very tough to make passes. By the way, who is excited to see this car car race a week and a half out from the Clash of the Coliseum? I tried out the Coliseum today. That is a tough track to master, folks. In my opinion, I think short track fans are going to love it. But if you're a guy that does not race short tracks or a lot, races the intermediates or super speedways, you're going to hate it. Ashton Crowder update on him. He is up into seventh position as we continue to watch this battle for the top spot. Oh, Susie gets tight. Way loose off at two. Here comes Kayla. And McCarthy for the first time today goes to the point. And this allows third place Dylan Clark to close in for the race lead. Top three put them all under a blanket in the battle for the top spot. Tires are starting to get worn out between each Oh my, Susie's gotta hang on. And that may cost him a spot to Dylan Clark. Of course he'll lose time. So Dylan Clark is up to second. Josh Susie has pretty much had that car wrecked like five times today, but somehow he keeps saving that car. It's crazy how much these rear ends slide out. Update on Crowder, there you see him. In the 98, your stage two winner, he is up to position number five. Trying to close in on Briggs Rope for fourth. Back to the battle for the lead. Quarter of a second separates McCarthy from Clark.
recovering from a rock just at the beginning of stage two. There was contact with Landon Lacey after Clark got really loose. That was the only contact he suffered, just front end damage. He's been able to recover the thing to get up to second. Ashton Crowder has swiped his way by Briggs Swope for fourth. Pulls it in on his teammate Susie for third. Remember Crowder looking to go seven for seven on the season. He's started six races this year and he's won six of them. The last start that Crowder made, if I recall correctly, it's been a long time. Really, it nice has. Nice fucking driving, dude. And uh-oh. Awesome. Isolate, oh man. He asked me to run me over. Your teammate blocked me fucking three minutes ago too. And we apologize for the language. But Isley is not happy, and I think he's not happy with Salter. Fucking look at something other than the rear end of everybody else's cars. Oh, boy. Isley is furious, and let's take a look and see what might have happened here. Was it with Crowell? This is from the rear end. Ah, car was next to him. Gonna take a look here. It's closing in on Crowell. Let's see if this is it. I can tell you, by the way, Crowder is up into second position. That's Isley right there in the 17. Should come right here. Is that Salt? I think that's Salter behind him in the 29 it is. Isley gets loose first. He tries to pinch up on the 29. Lost it, lost it, lost it. Which causes some crazy racing, some double file racing. And there's the bumper. And everyone saves it and that blows the engine up. Meanwhile, Isley's called it a day. Yellow flag is out meanwhile, and we've got trouble with Robbie Bice in the 28. And so we will take a look at a replay of that and show you what brought the yellow out there. Oh, just like Dilt. Ah, oh, man, that looked even, that looked worse than Dilt. Loose in turn one. This is going to be a lick. Was battling with Josh Aaron. I think that was for ninth position. Once the once that car snapped right, all Robbie could do was hang on. Now let's go from a chop from the drone perspective and watch this. Okay, now. I understand why Isley is furious. However, though, you gotta look back here. Salt. Hey, Sorry if we touched back there. I was trying to let you go by, and we both got a little loose. Salter could make a cha a, a case that. No, we didn't touch. We're good. Salter could make a case that Isley brake checked him because of how how much how slow Isley was off the gas. Watch this one more time. Right there. Like, I get what Isley is trying to do. Is try not to get tight in turn number three. Because of all those drivers he's trying to battle. But at the same time, Salter does have a case for the brake check. Give credit to Preslar, by the way, for missing that accident. That's just how I see it. I'm not trying to take a side on anything. But there are two cases to this scene. Just a heads up. Pit Road is open. See drivers come in. Four tires and fuel for Kayla McCarthy, but you know Ashton Crowder, he may even have a decent pit road too, so he could win it. Boom. Crowder beats out McCarthy. Coming out third is Susie. Mayberry fourth and Dylan Clark is fifth. 
Now, there won't be anything that's given to David Salter except for the contact points because of what happened. But just remember, uh, Robbie Bice was the reason why the yellow flag came out. Brian Wiggins stays out to lead a lap, but Ashton Crowder will assume the lead when we come back. Stay with us. With the Butt Kicker Gamer 2, what you see and what you hear is what you feel. Butt Kicker. The future is feeling. Ready for the restart, reset the field here. Brian Wiggins selects the inside line as we get ready to come back to the green flag. Row number two is Kayla McCarthy and Stan Mayberry. Row three is Josh Susie, Dylan Clark. Row four, Josh Aaron and Tyler Rush. Rounding out the top ten, Brian Preslar and Briggs Swope, the teammates. So Wiggins is the control car when they get into the speed demon restart zone. Here we go. Wiggins fires it, we're back to green. Crowder tries to maintain control. Wiggins pitted on lap 52, which was his last stop, so stayed out on that stint. Crowder, though, trying to fight it back around the outside. Gets the lead. So Crowder is back in front. Next question is how long can Wiggins hang on to that number one for? Josh Susie loose off the corner once again. McCarthy in third trying to take advantage. Crowder trying to break the draft. Mayberry fourth, Susie fifth. Dylan Clark is sixth. Susie inside on Mayberry. Highest position stance been today until now. Tyler Rush has to hang on to it, has to catch it twice, and could lose a spot to Aaron for position number seven. Can Aaron get by around the outside is the question. Yes, he can. Up front, meanwhile, McCarthy all the way down low on the track takes away second. Josh Susie fifth, again Mayberry back in six. Susie, Lucy, Goosey in one. That's been really calamity corner for a lot of drivers today. Brick Swope, Tyler Rush! Oh man! I don't know what to say about that, but he was rushing to try and save out and did it in the nick of time. Are we gonna go three wide to three for a moment? Jimmy Barr wants to, no, backs out of it. Takes it back to about 13th place at most. This is a big one waiting to happen in turn number four from this pack. It's getting crazy, folks, right now. 
Breslar 10th, Smeal 11th, Bar in 12th. Remember, with this is the final stage of this race. Everyone will get bonus points when lap 100 is complete. Let's keep it right here with you closely. Especially with Rush. Can he, can he keep that car straight? Is the question. Yes, he can. Let's go up to the front of the field. Dylan Clark by Brian Wiggins for fourth. Let's see if Mayberry can try and get by, who has fallen back to sixth ever since he went wide and let Susie go by. How about the teammates? Break swole by Josh Aaron for seventh. Nice pass by the driver of the seven. This can allow Tyler Rush to close in. Mayberry trying to get by Wiggins on fresh tires. Mayberry stick it. Yes, he can. Nice pass from Stan. So Wiggins falls back, and by the way, we can tell you, Crowder has opened up the gap to 3.3 seconds. Change for position here, Mark Sarkozy. Ever since he was involved in that wreck with Dylan Clark and Landon Lacey, the night's been rough for him. Currently running 14th with heavy left side damage. Alan Crowell also fading back too. To the front of the field once again, Mayberry and Clark. It's, I think you could deem this as the best battle on track for P4. Robbie Bice on the radio. And we just missed it. I think Bice may be talking with Jimmy Barr or something. I'm not too sure. Remember, all the drivers, by the way, are in separate team chats that we can still monitor. They try to communicate to race control as much as they can. Got yeah. Mayberry. Oh. Barry in the fifth position. I think he was trying to communicate with Dylan or so. As we watch another good battle here. Preslar, Steel, and Barr for position number nine. Also allows Salter in this battle. Here's Smeal. He takes a run underneath. Oh boy, Jimmy Barr bobble. Oh my goodness! Was that Salter all the way down near the grass? It was. That got close. Ryan Wiggins, though, continuing to fade back. Here's Josh Aaron trying to get up to his draft. Wiggins, I gotta give him credit. Nice job hanging in there in seventh position. Aaron's got the run underneath. And he lets Josh go and takes the position away. Smeal looking on Preslar, the third DraftKings driver. Oh my, three wide from Salter. That is a dangerous man today. And he goes for the two for one discount in a turn three and is up to ninth. How about some of these drivers that have made big moves? Stan Mayberry from 23rd to 5th. Josh Aaron from 24th to 7th. Brian Wiggins from 18th to 8th. David Salter from 19th to 9th. Could even make it 19th to 8th. Alan Crowell from 25th to 13th. Salter way wide, could allow Smeal to close in. Here's the battle for second. We haven't been looking at the front of the field for a while. It's Kayla and Susie. I think Susie is going to take it easy. 
Remember, drivers do have one more stop left in this race. They'll go until maybe lap 95-ish to pit. So you got to think if there is fuel strategy in question, I think everyone will have to make one more stop on a 100% fuel cap as here goes Susie inside. Edges McCarthy for second at the line, and McCarthy lets Susie have it. Great. We forgot where our brakes are tonight. David Smeal with an issue entering pit road and loses a bunch of spots. So he is, and he may have run out of fuel. I'm not too sure. McCarthy, though, trying to fight back on that battle for second position. I think they're done with that battle for now. Let's go behind them. Alan Crowell, Tyler Rush, 12th spot. Oh, Crowell try, almost found a hole there on Tyler Rush. In the I by Power number nine, just moved to the elevated motorsports team. Teaming up with Sakosi Dilts and Company. Sakosi Dilts, Wiggins and Company, I should say. We've got 25 laps to go. Another good battle right here. Jimmy Barr, who has recovered from his spin after getting turned by Sam Mayberry, has recovered up to the eighth position. Nice race for him so far today. Let's see what Salter can do. right on board here with the number 88. He's got the slipstream. And he lets Barr keep the position. Now let's look while we're at it in terms of the pit strategy side of things. This is how it looked. Everyone went. We know everyone can go for at least 27 laps. So that is lap 91 or so. We know that at least. So the window opens with about 10 laps to go or so. But can anyone make it before lap 100 hits? We've seen a 27, we've seen a 25. The longest anyone's gone today on pit road is 27. Second spot continues to take place between Susie and McCarthy. And it's still Kayla holding, trying to get back to second spot. This is starting to be a mess here. Jimmy Barr, Josh Aaron, and David Salter. That is in two. Salter with a run off the corner. So they go side by side. Salter can't get the side draft to work. Very tough to side draft at IMS with this setup. Aaron trying to hold his line. They're both trying to draft up to Barring that 81, who's now recovered up to seventh position. Got to give credit today while we were at it to the guy ahead of that three car jam session. That's Briggs Swope in the number seven. Running in the sixth position at the moment. This is a, a run that he can't be disappointed of at the moment. When you look at the standings coming in. Swope is the highest DraftKings racing driver. Fifth in regular season points coming in. Just 16 ahead of his second driver, Josh Aaron. Aaron is seventh in the stands. The driver that separates them is Alan Crowell, who is, who has who has three points ahead of Josh Aaron and 13 behind Swope. Let's go back to that 10th place battle. Brian Wiggins has faded back to 10th. So we can tell you this here. We are coming to lap number 80. 
Remember, Wiggins last pitted on lap 52. So this would be 28 laps. So when Wiggins pits, this could give us a nice idea of how long a driver can go. We would expect Wiggins to be the first one into the pits and probably the next driver to come in. And that would give us a good representation of how long a driver can go. So mark that down, friends. 52. So we're going to keep that in mind. 20 laps to go at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And it's Ashton Crowder that leads Josh Susie, Kayla McCarthy, Dylan Clark, and Stan Mayberry. We go side by side for the final time tonight. When we come back, we're taking you to the finish. Stay with us. Eighteen laps to go at the Brickyard. It is Ashton Crowder that leads by 10 seconds on Josh Susie, Kayla McCarthy, Dylan Clark, and one change amongst the top five. Briggs Swope has made its way up into the fifth position. Let's show you a replay of what just took place. This was in the short shoot. And I want to say that was in turn four as Swope makes it look easy. Mayberry just let him go off the corner, and there is a chasing down Jimmy Barr. Here we go, Mayberry trying to answer back in one with 17 laps to go. Again, we are watching closely. Can anyone make it on fuel? If somebody can, they're going to be clutching it big time, trying to save gas. As of right now, I don't think anyone can make it on fuel. Into turn three, hey, Mayberry in there. sends it in. No worries, Josh. Trying to no take worries. the top five. No worries, Josh. No worries. Salcher just reported something just on the radio. I think it was to Josh Aaron. They're running in eighth and ninth. Let's go back and watch this incredible battle happening. Mayberry all over. Up over with Jimmy Barn to one. A couple of guys I want to give shouts to, by the way, from today. Moose Pie, Jay Bebe, and Riley. Thank you for the follows all coming today. Moose Pie just followed a couple of seconds ago. Here we go for pit stops, by the way. And Tyler Rush is the first one in. This is a stop on lap number 85. Now, remember, he's got a lot of damage, which may have flat spotted the tires, potentially. 
So we are not too sure. So that is from 52, excuse me, from 64 to 85, something we did not expect him to go 21 laps. Remember, the longest anyone's gone today is 27. And the window has opened for a guy like Brian Wiggins. Everyone else's window is going to open with just about 10 laps to go. Mayberry can't answer back on the battle for fifth. Best battle you see on track at the moment. There's another one happening. That's for 10th. Crowell and Presla are going to work there. And now it moves back up to the front. Where it's not just that. Let's see if Mayberry makes a run. He can't. It's right here as well, coming to the start finish line. Susie and McCarthy. And McCarthy's got the run. Susie shuts the door. Remember, they are teammates. So they'll probably take it easy with each other as they are in the south chute. Let's go back to that battle for fifth. Swope and Mayberry. Still checking on Brian Wiggins. That's our resource on when he pits. He could go as much as 40 laps. We're nearly approaching lap 92 of this race. This is currently lap 87, so this is a 35 lap stint that Wiggins is on. Remember, he stayed out under the previous caution and has fallen back to 12th. He's been banking on a couple of more in this race. But of course, right now, this is our longest green flag run today. As the pass for Mayberry, looking for fourth. Excuse me, looking for fifth. Can't get it to nail it yet. And Briggswolf again on the defense on the outside. These two drivers have had a great races. Drivers you do not, we do not expect to finish in the top five coming into today. And they've done a good job missing all the rocks and included the front runners like Isley, Lacey, Bearline. It's part of notable examples. They're gonna see 12 to go at the start finish line. Let's go back to second position, Susie and McCarthy. They're continuing to work together. Now, Ashton Crowder. Oh, hang on. Staying high, Ashton. Staying high. Working on lap traffic. That's strip matter. A question I had about, Ash you. about Ashton Crowder because of this. Gore, copy faster as well. Because Ashton Crowder has an incredible Three lead. Assert. 13 seconds is if Crowder would use the clutch in the corners. He is not using the clutch at the moment, just still using the brake, not trying to save fuel. I think he knows possibly he does not have enough to go the distance. We go back to the fifth place battle. Jimmy Barr starting to become a part of it too. There's the run. Mayberry trying the sling shot into one. We know how good the defensive swope is today. Can he nail it? Oh man, he's loose off the corner and Wiggins is in. So Wiggins is in and that only took him to lap 89. So that was, we're counting this correctly, a 37 lap stint. As we look at this, oh my, it's going to be close. From 64 to 100. This is going to be a fun bout to the end. Who could, this is going to be a game of fuel. If I'm Ashton Crowder, I, am, I, I would think early about coasting. Coasting and holding on to the clutch. 
We're going to listen to some of these drivers on boards if they are doing that. The drivers specifically that are not in a battle for position. You hear Crowder not using the clutch off the corner. How about Dylan Clark into turn three? No clutch there. Let's go back to Salter, who's about to enter turn three. No clutch for him. Aaron, nope. How about Crowell? Ooh, maybe a little bit. Don't hear anything really from Don DeGroote. I shouldn't say DeGroot really at this moment because he is a lap down. If there were to be a late race yellow, DeGroote would get back on the lead lap. Swope is, tr is racing his heart out to try and hold off Mayberry. Stan's got the run though. He can't get the drive off in turn two. I think what it is in the, in the first corner after a long straight, Mayberry's got the advantage. But on the exit, then it's Briggs Wolf. Let's watch here in three and four. Mayberry's got the run on the first corner. But it's after the short two, I think a bad corner from Swolf. That may have been his worst entry corner. But can he pull it off here on the exit? No, Mayberry takes away fifth, and there you see it. Swolf is just so much better on the exit. Barr working with Swope, and he may have scraped the wall across the yard of Bricks. Wow, incredible defense. And look at Jimmy Barr trying to go around the outside. They got traffic ahead. This could get ugly. I'm trying to see who that is. Oh, my Barr! Mayberry, part two, and around goes the 81. Stops it on the track, hoping for a yellow flag to come out. He's not going to get it, and the chance for a top five for Barr just ended. Not even a top ten. He's back to 11th and about to go a lap down. There you see Crowder in the distance. What a heartbreak for Jimmy Barr. Was looking for an incredible, another great finish. And is out of the running. Show you what happened here once again. Oh, Barr got side, both of them. I think went off the up the track. Let's see what the drone shot gives us. Bar first gets loose. Ah, yeah. Bar got loose. And there, I don't think there was anything really that Mayberry could do. So Mayberry goes back to six. And Briggs Swope has opened up a 2.7 second lead with six laps to go. Icely. I can tell you this, he has left the pits and is just running on track for those wondering at home. He's 33 laps down in 20th. I don't think he'll really gain. He will gain likely two spots and try and finish in 17th. Another dominant running, though, for Ashton Crowder. Trying to go 7 for 7, but again, does he have enough fuel in the tank? Remember... Brian Wiggins did 37 laps. That's the most a driver has done in general. There you see Wiggins. You look at the pit strategy. That's amongst the top 10. They have done right now 31 laps. When you look at Wiggins, though, if we can try and show the top 20 or the top 15, there you see it right there. Wiggins has done 37 can anyone go above 37? That's the real question. It could be close. Let's go back to a battle for second position. While working with lap traffic, that's uh, DeGroote in the 20 car. They're putting the lap down. McCarthy trying to slingshot up on the outside, but can't do anything there. They'll see five laps to go this time by. Thanks, Patrick. Pardon me, four laps to go, I believe. Best. I know, I'm slower, so I just let you go. 
One of the best battles on track, along with this one for ninth, Alan Crowell and Brian Preslar. Preslar really wide in turn two, allows the gap to open up, but I think maybe even bad on the co entire corner for Crowell. Helping out Preslar, slingshot engaged. Nope, that's a little bump draft down the golf course straight. Ashton Crowder about to put them a lap down meanwhile and we'll see three laps to go at the Brickyard. And what we're hearing I think is that drivers will have enough to go the distance. Susie tries to break the draft of McCarthy in that battle for second position and cuts him off, tries for the better arc into one, and he's got it. Likely once again, a one, two, three, four, KTS Motorsports finish, could have been a one, two, three, four, five, but Landon Lacey finishing in 24th, his chance to go four straight wins is over. Back to the Preslar. Oh my, Preslar got loose off of four unless he was trying to send it with three laps to go. It's time there are two laps to go. Let's listen to Crowder once more in turn two. No coasting at all, so Crowder can make it to the end. From the looks of it, Joseph Thomas in chat says that Preslar has run a clean race again tonight and making a good showing as well. Great job, Brian, from Joseph Thomas. A 15-second clinic from Ashton Crowder. Yep. And this time by, Crowder will see the white flag in what has been the longest run, green flag run of the race. Shoot yeah, man. Josh Aaron lets Crowder go. Here's the white flag. One lap to go for the driver of the 98. Two and a half miles away from going seven for seven on the year. He's got the most wins this season. Down the back straightaway for the final time. An impressive running by Crowder. You see the battle for second between Susie and McCarthy. Crowder has left seven drivers on the lead lap today. Off a of turn four. He'll see the historic Pagoda. And the historic Pylon. Ashton Crowder, seven for seven on the season. He takes the Brickyard 250. A good win, Ashton. Thank you, great race, guys. And we definitely look forward to the interview. And meanwhile, for second at the line, Kayla McCarthy has edged out Josh Soucy by three hundredths of a second. So it's a one, two, three, four KTS finish. Remember, some people are born on third and think they get a triple. So Crowder ready to light them up, but Crowder, please do not light them up on the yard of bricks. Crowder's already got the... He's weaving the car, I think making sure he's got enough fuel in the tank for a burnout, I don't know. But here we go. Oh, he pounds it in the rear. Twice. Nice donuts.
There's Susie who wants to get a part of this burnout action too. Where's Kayla at in this burnout? There she is off turn four just watching this by herself. She finishes second. Let's start by talking with our third place finisher, Josh Susie. Josh, uh, just start off by walking us through your race. Uh, pretty good race. Made a bonehead move on an early caution, watching TV, ran in the inside wall and straight <laughs> away. Um, really had to fight a super loose car, Justin on an all race, and then uh, it was pretty good. Last 10 laps, holding off Kayla, and then all of a sudden, out of four, I just got really, really sideways and lost all the momentum. Allowed her to get alongside me and pass me, coming to the line. Uh, it was a fun battle. I think if it had been anyone else, I probably would have slammed the door, but uh, being a teammate you know we like to play nice yeah give me one second here we'll take a look at that and show the fans what happened but while we are at it uh who do you want to give shout outs to tonight for your great run uh everyone at kts uh good teamwork as always uh charge racing nitro setup shops all the admins here at the league um everyone that showed up i think we got a couple new guys and uh this is really a big challenge new uh, update on these cars they drive completely different to what we're used to so uh shout out to the admins giving us like i think another extra hour of practice pre-race so everyone that took advantage of that you know was desperately needed these things were were stupid loose a lot faster on the straightaway and uh you know we adjusted as best we could and uh, as usual teamwork pulled through and we had a pretty good set we were able to rally uh, i think uh one through four and yep um uh, Rush was running pretty good, and he had some unfortunate circumstances. He ended up, uh, I think, DNFing, but uh, otherwise, it was pretty good, man. I appreciate you, as always, broadcasting for us. Hope we put on a good show. I know Indy can be boring at times, but oh, you did. I tell you what, these cars were a handful. A lot worse than what they normally would have been, so there's something for you to look forward to going, going forward with these cars. They're uh, really hard to drive now. Absolutely. Looks like you won the burnout battle with Kayla. So we'll let you go. Nice job tonight. <laughs> Appreciate it, man. Thank you. Josh Susie finishing in third position. How about our second place finisher, Kayla McCarthy? Kayla, how were you able to make that last lap pass off of four against Susie? Uh, very patiently, man. Uh, Susie is definitely one of the uh, one of the guys in here that that you set yourself up every week to to run against, as well as when Ashton shows up and. Um, Ashton just had a, a piece from no other. Unfortunately, we didn't uh, didn't get a chance to run with them uh, as far as you know competitiveness or anything like that. But got to lead some laps, got some stage points. Um, P two overall, we'll uh, we'll take it. I think we were second, third, and and fourth for the the KTS TSN guys. So uh, we'll take it. What do you want to give shout outs to tonight? I gotta give a shout out to Russ with Nitro Energy, or Nitro yeah. Setup Shop. Uh, for putting this piece underneath us tonight. It was an amazing piece. Uh, even better long run, for at least for me. Um, my wife, first and foremost. Uh, everybody that, that puts into this league. Uh, all my teammates, Josh Sushi, Dylan Cl uh, Clark, Tyler Rush. Uh, just, uh, yeah. All right, we'll let you go. Kayla, great job tonight. Thank you. Kayla McCarthy with a second place finish. Time to go to Victory Lane and talk with the guy. He's 7-for-7 seven seven on the year. He's ready to kiss some bricks. Ashton Crowder, the mic is yours once again, sir. Seven wins in seven starts. Thank you. Yeah, this uh, this race couldn't have gone too much better. Um, I messed up a couple of times when I was at the wall, but uh, this new uh, arrow package, I don't even want to mention that it's a thing. Because <laughs> honestly, kind of tired of the conversation, but um, it's completely different than what NASCAR is gonna bring. No, uh, it's what we had tonight was what they're gonna be running next year. So ah, okay. Yeah, so these cars were, I mean, I don't even know how to describe them. They were crazy. I I was running most of the race like the um, old package and like old car with the high downforce package well, I'm probably lagging a little bit I don't know um, but uh, I was running most of the race like that and then I thought about it I'm like wait a second this is low downforce higher horsepower maybe I need to go back to how I was driving it in like 2018 I started trying to ramp over the curbs and I started picking up like two tenths a lap and I was like oh here we go 
uh, we're looking good. But um, yeah, I mean, it was just it was so fun. I'm really tired now. It takes a lot out of you when you're really really having to drive the car. It's no longer just a mental thing anymore. Uh, it's back to getting you hot and hot and sweaty. So I'm just uh, real excited. Well, it's an impressive run for you tonight. Who do you want to give shout outs to? Yeah, I want to give a huge shout out to uh, oh, iRacing iFlag. Just uh, I don't know about officially yet, but it seems like they're going to be sponsoring us this Road to Pro season. That's really cool. I'm really excited for that. Uh, you know, hopefully we'll have some more partners come on board in the near future. Things will be looking good. But everybody at the Drill Spill, Lord, we've we've had like 30 different names in the past three months <laughs> or whatever, but. The drill spill is where it's at. Um, it's back to it's like 2018. Couldn't be happier. Um, you've been put on the broadcast. Uh, everybody with the league. I mean, it's just it's really fun. I didn't know if I was really going to be able to race this. I had to last minute get my internet stuff hooked up. I have a guy coming out tomorrow. So I got to wake up kind of early for that. But uh, didn't even know if I was going to get to race this. Got in here with like 40, 50 minutes left in practice and said, man, I really hope I'm good. And um, so used all my engineering knowledge that I have and threw something together, and it was the best thing by far. So all right, just well, uh, really proud. All right, we'll let you go. Congrats on the win tonight. Yep. Thank you, Marty. No problem. Ashton Crowder, 7-for-7 seven seven tonight for the win at Indianapolis in the National Sim Racing League. Your official results from tonight's running. It's Ashton Crowder with the win. Kayla McCarthy second. Josh Susie third. Dylan Clark fourth. Briggswold fifth. David Salter sixth. Stan Maybe Mayberry in seventh. The only drivers that finished on the lead lap. A lot of drivers with tough breaks as well tonight. Mark Sikosi star off of that. Two drivers head on into the wall. Uh, that was Justin Dilt and Robbie Bice all having that situation take place tonight. And the rest of the drivers, Tyler Isley getting caught up in that checkup situation. Uh, Landon Lacey had a chance at a top three run or had a chance of making the KTS top five sweep. Unfortunately, that did not go down well. Again, next week, we are headed to Michigan International Speedway, an incredible racetrack. That should be a fun one. I believe it's 125 laps around the two-mile D-shaped oval. So you do not want to miss out on that at all. And to confirm here, yes, 125 laps. So that will do it for us here tonight. And a big shout, as always, to our sponsors, Affordable SEO and Marketing, Butt Kicker, Speed Demon Setups and Graphics, and Elevated Outdoors. On behalf of everyone, at the National Sim Racing League, our admins in charge, Mark Sikosi and Justin Diltz. My name is Marty Sakala. signing off for tonight. He is 7-for-7 seven seven this season with the National Sim Racing League. It's Ashton Crowder. He takes the chuck and flag at the Brickyard. Thank you all for joining us tonight. So long from Indy, everyone. <laughs>